We'll have time for questions later on, and I will be very pleased to answer them. But you need to let the order of the meeting go on. Standard Charter do not seem to be getting the message. Standard Charter do not seem to be getting the message. No new fossil fuels. No new fossil fuels. Thank you. We'll have time for that later. We'll have time for that in a moment. We will have time for that in a moment. If you are so kind to wait for a while, then we will be able to address any questions you want to pose. But now, this is not the time. So, to, to, to hang on a moment, I'm going to have to ask, I don't understand this, there, there is a Q&A session, there is human, there is, there, it, we, 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 we've heard about Drax already, I think we're going to have to ask people to be escorted out, I'm sorry, but otherwise we, we just won't, thank you very much. Thank you. Could you please leave? We can't. We can I just emphasize that um, we, we can hit. We, uh. I will leave, but you say that you will wait until the question and answer. I think we have waited long enough. You are hurting my arms. You are hurting my arms. You are hurting my arms. Shame on all of you! You are hurting my arms. 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 You are killing the planet here. You are killing the planet. Do not understand what you are doing. Do not understand what you are doing. Already there is climate crisis in the global south. People are suffering already. So you are here and you not see what you are doing here. Your bank is funding that. Stop funding climate chaos. Well, 
this bank is funding a climate catastrophe. It's hard to hear, isn't it? That your grandchildren won't have the life that you guys have. So you're repeating yourself. It's hard to hear that, isn't it? I'm going to have to say if right. I'm now going to have to say. Can, would you would you be kind enough just to listen? We're going to have to ask people to be escorted out, which is a great shame because there's plenty of opportunity for Q and A's instead of. Uh, as, you're not going to be heard. It would be much better if people waited for Q and A's. You'd be given a microphone and you'd have a chance to hear what the board has to say. But if people if people wish to be escorted out. I'm very sad about that because thank you very much. Not sure whether I should start again, but I promise you, anybody that wants to say more, there, as I keep saying, there's a proper session. We're not going to try and curtail it, and you'll have the benefit a of a microphone and b of an answer. What we're getting at the and moment is hard questions. I'm afraid we can't always hear them. Some people have got powerful voices. Other. That's a really good question. Uh, we do still have a quorum. Uh, I th thank you. It's nice to have a, a little bit of humour. Um, thank you for asking. Um, so I think we have a quorum. Uh, I think there are still no objections to the notice of meeting. And um, I think we were um, getting into how we're going to handle the meeting. So I'm giving notice that in accordance with the Articles of Association, there will be a poll on each of the resolutions, that's numbers 1 to 26, as set out in the notice. I propose that we open the poll now so that you can vote on the resolutions at any point during the course of the meeting. If you're attending electronically, you can vote using the online platform. I think I'm going to have to ask the security guards to Escort this gentleman to the door at the back, please. Can I now propose that each of the resolutions set out in the notice and listed on the poll cards and the voting screens of the online platform?
Can I just say to our um, friends from security, you don't need to wait for me to ask, because otherwise we'll be here all day, which we'll do if we've got proper questions, but I, I can't even hear what the lady's saying, so um, if you would be kind enough to show her the way out, thank you. Morning everybody, it's Fergal here outside the AGM um, Standard Charter where I'm joined by a very, very large group of uh, shareholders who have all just been kicked out of the AGM. You can see they're all gathered here behind me with their uh, devil masks on, lining up with the, uh, with the city police in the, in the background. There's uh, quite a huge crowd of people here. Building here, I'll just point out, is uh, this is the building that we're just uh, escorted out of. So you're just watching that from the uh, from the other side. And we got a big, huge lineup happening here. You can hear that chanting. There we go. There we go. So quite a quite a big uh, big crowd here. Over to my uh, right, just here, we've had these uh, banners have been um, uh, outside one of the entrances. It's been a cat and mouse going on all morning, with the entrances keep on changing of uh, exactly where the shareholders are actually going in. This is one of the entrances just here. Then it changed around the corner, down this way, and then over that side. We had three different entrances going on here. We've got these banner holders who've been uh, handing out information and giving speeches to uh, different people who have been walking past. Um, uh, the big the big upshot from what we're listening to is these AGMs are happening. Uh, Standards Chartered is the third largest investor um, in the uh, in United Kingdom in fossil fuel extraction. Despite uh, everything we've heard from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Got a lot of police noise going on here. Yeah. All right, so we've and uh, we've also had, uh, you know, the International Energy Agency, right? So the International Energy Agency was actually set up to protect oil and gas interests for wealthy nations, okay? So they came out in 2021 to say, we cannot have any more oil and gas extraction ever, right? And not only that, they actually said we have to decrease our oil and gas uh, by 3 to 4% a year. And that's actually relying on carbon capture and storage, okay? So the IEA are actually saying, we can't even do this. So Standard Charter are uh, masters in greenwash. Go onto their, go onto the website, and the very first thing you'll see is them talking about uh, reaching net zero by 2050, all about all their investments in green energy, on all this wonderful thing. They talk about phasing out uh, uh, coal by 2030. What they actually don't talk about is the fact that they're actually still investing shareholders' money in new oil and gas, right? And, uh, and this is what we need to stop. We need to stop the money, the flow of money that's going into these new uh, oil, oil and gas. So we've got a little clip from earlier on. So if we could uh, just play a little clip from what, what it was actually like inside uh, the AGM meeting. So you can, you can see here, this is actually what it was looking like inside when uh, everybody uh, donned their masks, listening to the uh, president of the Standard Charter speaking, chanting about no new oil and gas. So these kind of, uh, these kind of ways are very good of getting the messages over to, uh, to the shareholders, because a lot of shareholders don't actually realize that their money is getting reinvested into oil and gas and actually destruction of the planet. Okay, the reason that they invest is for, obviously, for profit, and a lot of people, they want to have profit, but they actually don't want to destroy the planet. So these kind of actions are very good. It actually highlights and calls out directly to the shareholders and to the companies themselves what they're doing is totally wrong. You could see there, you could hear the, uh, the annoyance and anguish in the voice of you trying to talk reason and saying, 
there's plenty of time for Q and A afterwards and trying to kind of uh, just just move it off to uh, to later. But the um you know the message has been actually sent to the shareholders. It's also happening here in uh, in Barclays with AGMs happening and all these big large multinational companies all have shareholders uh, meetings. So it's very important that shareholders become very aware of actually where their money is going. It is going to the destruction of the planet and they need to uh, educate themselves about this. They need to learn about it. They need to listen to people who are actually outside and inside protesting and the actual mass messages that they're actually saying. So I'm just going to uh, have a walk over here. Stop okay, we've got this, uh, what is features going on here? Our future is at stake. The futures of communities around the world are at stake. We demand that governments take action. We demand that corporations stop putting profit above people and stop fueling the climate emergency. Yeah. <laughs> I just got to go and see if I can have a, a chat with. Uh, do you want to have a quick chat with me? Uh, so you're the you're the CEO of Standard Chartered. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Bill so, Winters. Nice to meet you. There we go. So do you want to just have a look at the camera here, so we can uh, we can all see your pretty face. So what did you think of the shareholders meeting today? Yeah, not sure how these people got in. Really, it's, uh, they just do not understand. I think uh, it's um, a little bit infantile, or so childish. Uh, ultimately, we have to bring process this to the world, uh, progress to the world, and uh, energy is progress. But do not realize by bringing. Oh, it's very loud. We're going to move around. We're going to bring corner here. So yeah, this is quite exciting. Got a, a, an interview with the actual CEO of Standard Charter. There we go. That's good. So you're you're investing billions and billions into the extraction of new oil and gas infrastructure projects, right? Despite the fact that it's actually destroying lands of indigenous communities, it's going against uh, climate uh, science, and uh, and also you're going to have stranded assets for your your future and for your actual shareholders. What do you think about that? Well, we do have a sustainability team who looks after these things, and uh, you know. Ultimately, they come up with their conclusions, and uh, if they say it's okay to do it, and also the companies we invest in have sustainability teams, yeah. and I'm sure quite a few of them, and I cannot tell you the details, mm -hmm. also invest in renewables. Yeah, but the amount you uh, invest in renewables is, is good, but the fact you're actually investing in oil and gas extraction that's going to take 20 to 50 years to pay back to shareholders is totally unacceptable. Can this, the people cannot live with our energy. Energy is progress. Okay, so I don't. I think we're going around in circles here. So, what message would you give your shareholders? Then? Keep it. Trust us. We are doing the right thing. Um, we 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 are talking with the companies we are best investing in. They will come up with a transition plan. It's. Uh, we think that. But this is all greenwashing. The fact that you're still investing in oil and gas, going against science, going against the pledges of the Paris Accords, is, is, is it's criminal. The IEA is an interesting organization, and they come up with these models, but they are not the decision makers. You know, I am the person, me and my team, we are making those decisions. We've looked at climate change, and uh, yeah, the conclusion is that we still think we need to continue. Yeah, but you're you're destroying the planet. You're not going to have a livable planet for your children. Am I? You know, some 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 uh, people have come up with. It, it, it depends who you're listening to, right? So you're listening to one person. I am listening to another person. Who okay, right? we're, we're going around in circles here. Okay, so uh, I would wish you the best of luck. Let's go and see if I can find a more sensible uh, devil to talk to. Sorry. So you can see the uh, images from earlier on in the meeting that was happening in the AGM. So this is uh, up in Manchester, Barclays, Barclays Bank. So Barclays is the number one investor in hydrocarbon fossil fuel extraction in Europe. Since the uh, Paris Accord, they have been pumping billions, tens and tens of billions 
into new oil, gas, coal extraction, even money into tar sands and uh, the likes of uh, some of the most dodgy coal mine expansions in the world, right? They're investing in huge infrastructure projects that are going to take literally uh, 10, 20, 30, 40 years to pay back to their shareholders. Uh, and uh, yeah, so Barclays uh, needs to be called out. So we can see here, uh, this is actually inside the AGM meeting. Again, uh, the shareholders of Barclays are getting to uh, hear firsthand how annoyed people are. Citizens of the world are rising up against the likes of these uh, large corporations. If we need to tackle, if we need to stop uh, climate change, climate injustice, the destruction to our biospheres, we need to stop the flow of money. Right? We need to stop money going into oil and gas. We need to redirect it into sustainability projects, renewable energy projects, which uh, I can tell you personally firsthand, it is actually quite difficult getting funding for a lot of renewable energy projects and sustainability projects because they don't have, uh, they don't have very big backers so small renewable energy projects, uh, they're not bankable. The likes of uh, Barclays don't like them. They prefer having nice big uh, single investment companies or vehicles uh, that are so-called bankable. What they don't realize, if you uh, work out the science and you explain it to the shareholders, is the fact that what they're investing in is going to be a stranded asset. Okay, and the stranded asset is an asset that can never ever be realized. So working on, on the different uh, models of actually how much oil and gas and hydrocarbons are in the ground, it's between 60 to 80% of all known hydrocarbons have to physically stay in the ground. And they're, they're actually on the books of the likes of Barclays, Standard Chartered, and all these investment companies, BlackRock, and et cetera, et cetera. And they own billions, probably trillions and trillions and trillions of uh, so supposedly assets that are valued that are actually in the ground, right? And if we are going to meet 1.5 degrees, which we're not, we know we're, we're going to smash through by 2030, according to the latest science, but if we are to keep in line with these targets, it means physically leaving them in the ground. And that means that, that uh, asset uh, uh, on the books of these companies becomes a stranded asset. And a stranded asset can never be realized and the people who are going to pay for it in the end are going to be the shareholders. So shareholders need to be aware that what they're investing in is not a livable future. It's going to become a stranded asset. It's a bad investment, and they need to stop it. And they need to stop it now. So that's that's clear, and that's what the message is. I'm going to see if I can find uh, one of these people here. Somebody want to have a quick uh, word of me who is inside? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Hi. You're inside, do you want to have a quick word? Uh, it's for, for the live stream. So you're inside, we were yes. watching you. Uh, what was your reaction from the um, uh, CEO? He, he was very flustered. Well, sorry, I think it was the chair, but anyway. He was sorry, very, chair, yeah. He was very flustered, um, and he tried to tell us that we, he, we could have a discussion with him outside later. Um, we kept interrupting him because we didn't believe a word of it. And uh, he, eventually he got so flustered that the um, security guards moved in between the chairs and started telling us to leave or we'd be arrested or they'd yeah. call the police. And so you're, you've obviously, uh, you're obviously a shareholder. I am a shareholder. There we go. So do you think uh, most shareholders realize actually how bad the destruction of like the likes of Standard Chartered and Barclays and other companies? I'm sure that, they don't. Why, yeah. why, why would they... So why would they have shares in a company that is literally destroying the planet? I think people don't realize how serious it is yeah. since the IPCC report said if we don't stop new oil and gas now, we're actually completely doomed. I, Most people have children. Have you got children? I don't have children. I have a, I have a, a step-grandchild. Yeah. But... I'm still very, very concerned for the planet, yeah, whether yeah. I have children or not. But, you know, you think if people have children, surely, surely they want the planet to survive. Yeah. So, so the likes of like lots of shareholders are going to have families as well. And it's, it's this generation and the next generation. And you're just mentioning the IPCC report, which is like, which is catastrophic. We're, we're talking about like, you know, absolute destruction of the planet. You that's know, right. code red from humanity. That is scientists that's saying that. It's not like, Extinction Rebellion or whatever. It's yeah. 
and it was quite a, quite a lot. I couldn't believe the amount of people who actually came out here today. It was like how many? What twenty, thirty in people protesting inside? Inside there were at least thirty. Yeah. Yeah, and outside there's been just as many. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is unprecedented. I think. Yeah. Did you ever did you ever think ten years ago you'd be doing something like this? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't really know how to answer that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not my, it's not my, you know, it's not probably not what I kind of want to do on a Wednesday. I'd yeah. probably like prefer to <laughs> do other things, do something else. Yeah. But uh, I'm very pleased to support this cause. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's very good. Well, uh, keep up the good work, and, and thank you for that. Thank you. There we go. Hey, We're going to go and ask about um, our votes yeah. and why we um why we're being disenfranchised. Would you like to join us? Sure, that's good. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, what's your name, sir? I'm Casey. Casey, okay. Yeah. And Casey, you're looking very uh, dapper today. Thank you. Okay, so you're you're inside the meeting earlier. That's right. So I'm just here with Casey. We're walking uh walking over. You've got a. Uh, is he? Are these voting cards? They are voting cards. Okay, we've got voting cards for the AGM. Do you want to just uh, hold up one so I can have a look? Okay, just uh, oh there you go. So these these are our voting cards for a standard charter. Uh, people get to fill them in, uh, answering different questions. I haven't got time to go through them all, but it looks like uh, you've filled up quite a few of them. Okay, so what are you going to do? You're going to see if you can get your voting cards in? Yes, I'm a shareholder and I have a right to vote in this meeting. At the moment, I'm being disenfranchised, yeah. so I want to ensure that my vote gets counted. Yeah, okay. So let's have a. So we're outside the uh, entrance of. Uh, just a I'm really sorry. Yeah, but well, then you're going to need to facilitate need, someone's come down to yeah. take these votes. We're, we're, we're get, legitimate um, shareholders in the company, and these are all legitimate. What's that? I'm recording them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's like I'm okay. I am a shareholder. It says there, and it says it there. It tells you I'm a shareholder. This is my vote. I have a right to this vote as much as I have a right to the meeting, and I cannot be disenfranchised. Therefore, can you bring somebody from Standard Charter down to take my vote, please? So no, you can ask the registrars to come down, but this is legitimate from a, you know, shareholders of the company. No, but you can bring them out. No one what you are not allowed to do. No, what you are not allowed to do is this. So we. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 So what what we're seeing here is we're seeing the shareholders. Uh, legitimate shareholders are actually trying to give their voting cards. They've they filled in they've filled in uh, a form of how they want to vote in this uh, AGM, and they are actually trying to uh, get it inside. So uh, it looks about twenty or thirty forms have been filled in. Uh, we've got two people discussing about trying to get the uh, voting cards uh, inside, which uh, I've just listened to one person saying is uh, legitimate as a shareholder. They're actually allowed to vote. So there's a, a discussion going on here, outside here, trying to, trying to get their uh, legitimate vote heard. Okay. So uh, we'll, see, uh, we'll see how that's, that's going on. I'll just, I think I'll just leave them to the, that discussion there. You got more people uh, handing out flyers. You're handing out flyers, sir? Yes, I am. How's it going today? You're looking very dapper as well. Were you inside the meeting? No, I wasn't. I just thought I'd look dapper outside. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and help what, standing what, out the leaflets. Would you like a leaflet? And what does your leaflet say? Uh, have a read. Okay, it's saying about uh, investing in uh, Saudi Armco, uh, Mozambique, LNG uh, projects, Adani. Oh, Adani. I know Adani. They're pretty bloody bad. Yeah, um, standard chance yeah. to invest in them. Big PLC, time. yeah. So these are all the companies that uh, Standard Charter are investing in. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And that's why uh, people should withdraw their money from Standard Chartered. Yeah. Um, and, and you're giving this to uh, people going in and out of the building? and. Yes. And yeah. anybody else who's walking past because everybody needs to know it. Yeah. Um, okay. No, very yeah. good. Very good. Good luck. Keep on the good work. So you can see behind me now, there's a, a couple of police have come over to the security. There's a quite a quite quite a big debate about trying to get their... Uh, legitimate voices heard inside the AGM to get their voting cards in. Uh, they did leave peacefully, so I think it's only fair that the somebody actually comes down from Standard Charter and actually takes their voting cards. Uh, we'll get an update on that to see how it's going. It's going to cross back over here. You can see also behind me there's a there's quite a huge banner that's been erected on this uh, roundabout saying Standard Charter here for fossil fuels. 
So, yeah, you can just see uh, it's a, an extremely large banner. You're talking um, maybe uh, 30, 20 to 30 meters across uh, and coming down about five meters. Uh, quite huge. So anybody going around this roundabout is actually going to going to go and see it. We've got going to walk into the site. So we're listening to um, don't know exactly know what's going on here. There you go. What's going on now? I don't know. How you doing? Want to have a quick word to me? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you were inside? Yeah, I was inside, yeah. Yeah. And how was it? It was really powerful. Yeah, it was really, it was, um, I think we definitely got our message across. They, yeah. uh, we managed to read out a lot of the statements that we prepared. Um, security were quite tight, but we, you know, we were in there for a good 15 minutes giving out, interrupting the AGM. Yeah. And yeah, I think we really, a lot of people were quite visibly affected by what we were saying. And also by the fact that many of the people refused to walk out, some had to be dragged out. So I think we made a strong impact. Yeah. yeah I could see that we made a strong impact. Because quite, quite a lot of shareholders have absolutely no idea how bad Standard Charter are. So you know, these kind of actions are very good at actually pointing out to the shareholders, you know, what actually is going on. I was really surprised, actually. I talked to a couple of the shareholders before the meeting began and, you know, just how ordinary and friendly they were. And it seems so um, bizarre that they were investing in the company, which was, you know, creating such damage. And, um, you know, we've been to International Energy Agency has said we need to end fossil fuels immediately. And yet yeah, they're continuing to invest in fossil fuels. So yeah. I think they'll be, maybe we've taught them something today. No, no, very good, very good. I don't know why exactly know what's going on here. Everyone's standing in silence. I think they're listening to a recording. Oh, they're listening to a recording. Possibly something from Mozambique. Yeah, no, no, fair enough. Let's see if I can have a chat with somebody else. There you go. Any of you like to have a quick chat with me of uh, how, how was how was it inside? It was great. It was great fun. Yeah. It was, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was great. It was nice. So great fun. It was great fun. So you're, you're a shareholder? I am a proxy. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, have you voted? No, I haven't. Yeah. I haven't. Uh, and I've lost my water bottle as well. <laughs> so you lost what? My my water bottle inside. Oh, okay. In shame. So, but anyway. That's very good, very good. And you've got the uh, some of your mask. You've got the devil's one. So, what does this represent then? Is the chairman I think? Yeah. Yeah. So. Very good. And if you could give a message to the shareholders, obviously you gave a very loud message to the shareholders today. But what, oh, what would you say to them? Just stop investing in fossil fuel. Put, put people over profit. Yeah. Put life on hard over the profit. Put yeah. the children's life over profit. Yeah. Because you cannot do anything. Very good. Well, keep up the good work. Thank you. See if anybody else wants to have a... Anybody else want to have a quick word of me? Go on, don't be scared, so don't bite. What's, what's your name? It's my first AGM meeting. Your first AGM, congratulations. <laughs> first AGM. I've survived. It's like, it's like an A meeting. I've survived it, I know. Yeah. No, it was very impressive the how we we did chant together, and I think we made our point yeah. that we had, uh, it was like a group of us together in the centre, but unfortunately, they were ready for us and we came and they took our masks off, so we, that was a bit of a downer for us. Yeah. So maybe the next time, we might think about not bringing masks because I think they're on the ball now to check. Yeah. yeah but we had them well hidden, but they were on to us. Yeah. So. Very good. So that's my next thing. I won't we're, bring Would you do another AGM? Oh yeah, it was yeah. fun. It was all fun. There we go. <laughs> yeah. But with a very serious message though. A very serious message, but definitely with the eight, well, we're just talking about the Indian um, financer who's putting 8.8 .8 gigawatts of money, yeah. of money to supply 8.8 .8 gigawatts yeah. of coal since eight, 2019. So yeah. they've been putting a lot of money into mm. their coal, new coal. And, and coal, coal we're, we're actually told like with the, uh, you know, COP26 is like, it's like yeah. no, no new coal, like no zero. New coal, like but none. they're all just avoiding it and they're all like greenwashing. They're saying, yeah, we're going to do this by 2050, yeah. we'll have net zero. I mean, at the same time yeah. at the back, they're still financing coal and yeah. gas, all fossil fuels, which is sad. No. Well, that's good. Well, yeah. keep up the good work. Thank you. Congratulations on your first AGM. <laughs> there you go. Do you have a word? 
kind of a little word, yeah. It was done out of the rain here. It's just started raining here. But the spirits are still high. Uh, what's your name and what's going on? Uh, I'm Piers and I'm here. I'm here to support the, the activists who've gone inside because I'm aware, you know, that we're in this situation where um, the people who have money and have the big pensions mm -hmm. that young people can only dream of. Yeah. You know, I, I'm 60 years old. I don't actually have a pension, but people my age do have a pension. Yeah. And I meet a lot of young people who dream of having a pension. Mm -hmm. So I imagine a lot of the funds that is funding, you know, the, the pressure to fund this, to keep funding fossil mm -hmm. fuels and to yeah. keep the expansion going and to yeah. keep the economy grow, 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 is coming from the boomers. Yeah. The baby boomers, the people of my age, 60 years plus, 70, 80s, mm -hmm. who are sitting on big pensions. And they, they need to step up and come in and be the shareholders and put pressure on their investment companies and say, listen, this is not okay for our children and our grandchildren. Mm. They have to do this. They have to come out of their rocking chairs yeah. and stand up. The boomers. We need the boomers on board. We need board. the boomers. Good we message. We need the boomers on board. Good message. Okay. We thanks like for that. that. It's going to go now. I've just seen somebody coming out of the uh, handing in the voting card rights. Thank you uh, for doing this. No, no, thanks for that. Keep up the good work. See you at the next one. Yeah. So I just... Uh, just i uh, going to have a quick word with uh, this uh, dapper looking gentleman over here. How are you doing? Do you want a quick uh, update? Yeah. So uh, so you were you went over, you were trying to actually hand in your voting card into the AGM. That's and, correct. And you went over and you had a very, I'd say, somewhat heated discussion that they wouldn't actually take your voting card off you. Or it, was, it was about 20 or 30 voting cards. That's correct. Yeah. We did in the end, we did finally get to an understanding that even, uh, that however, however it's looked at, we are shareholders and proxy shareholders, and we have a right to this uh, to uh, to have our votes heard. Mm -hmm. So they were finally taken by a gentleman named Dave Marks, who I understand is a senior advisor for Standard Chartered, and they should now be represented in the in the votes. Okay, so you will get your voice heard then. That's good. Well, it was a good job for persisting with us. Thank you. Know. you. Let's let's see what the outcome is. Thank you very much. And just just on a, a wider question about like investment in in like people and people invest in the pension funds and they don't realize that when they invest in pension funds that the money actually ends up in the likes of standard charter standard charter then goes and invests in a danny and all these dodgy hydrocarbon and and even even in like african countries like like slavery modern day slavery and you know uh, indigenous lands getting destroyed and people got no idea what's going on the thing is the whole idea of investing in a pension fund is that you are looking to your future. Now, those futures very often tie with the futures of your offspring. And what, the, what is probably the worst outcome is that you invest in a future that disenfranchises your offspring. It's literally like saying, I'm going to invest in a company because they tell me they are good for me. And the first thing they do is take a bulldozer and knock down your house. How does that work? And where is the sense in that? We need to get people, as shareholders, it is our responsibility to direct the, the strategies and the thinking of the, of the corporates and those who only think of short-term gain to understand that a long-term investment needs not kill us, but actually should work for us. There is financial gain to be made in actually doing the right thing. All it requires is an end of myopia. Very well said. Thank you. Well, thank you. Well, keep up the good work. You know, so this, this is what we need. We need uh, more people uh, becoming shareholders and actually calling out companies and telling them exactly where the, the money's been held. Just bear with me one sec. So, uh, just going to pop this in. I haven't been able to listen to uh, Director Vlad. Just uh, checking everything is okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it has started raining here. Just going to. Uh, do you want to have a quick word of me? Sure. So, what's what's your name? Sadie. Sadie, and uh, you're you're uh, you're you're giving a couple of speeches earlier on as the. People from the AGM were coming in and out. Yeah. You know, so what kind of responses were you getting? Or, uh, yeah. Did you have any conversations with anybody? I think in general, people um, 
people want to pretend like we're not here. In general, they are not so keen to see us trying to disrupt the business as usual. Yeah. Um, and so we do what we can to spread the message that the climate emergency is happening now um, and that the people must stand up against the corporations that are profiting mm -hmm. um, from the destruction of the planet. Yeah. Um, Sorry, there's flares, the flares go, there's flares, there's flares, there's flares, there's flares, there's flares, we got flares going off behind us here. Just give you a sorry. Just uh, I'll be back to you in one moment. So anyway, back to our interview. <laughs> oh, it's fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <coughs> oh, sorry. Oh. I've just taken in a <coughs> mouth full of that. So you're, some, of the, some of the things you're talking about as well are very powerful. So just give us yeah. a quick rundown of what your, your messages were. Yeah, so the impacts of climate change are affect people in the global south most strongly. And those are the communities that did the least to cause the climate crisis. So yeah. it's people uh, living in poverty, people um, who are already struggling to get by, who are feeling the effects. Um, and it's big corporations uh, and, and financial institutions like Standard Chartered that are making profits off of the destruction of these communities um, as they face increased flooding, fires, drought, heat wave, et cetera, from the climate crisis. So, so there's always a big disconnect between people who invest and their actual, you know, their, their you know, their actual impact on communities and people you know they, they don't see it they don't feel it they, they, they actually don't even want to know about it yeah absolutely and I, I think they want to try and avoid that cognitive dissonance that you get where you're you're trying to um you know make that profit but um not really thinking about where that investment goes i think a lot of people don't think very deeply about it and they should and that's what we're trying to wake them up to as well yeah, yeah, and and some of the things you were saying earlier, you're you're um, uh, were you talking about like um, I don't know which countries you're talking about. You're giving some examples. So we have examples from around the world of countries and communities affected by climate change and by projects by um, funded by Standard Chartered. Yeah, that's what it is. So we have in uh, communities, we have letters from communities in the Philippines, in Zambia, in Mozambique, um, and in Indonesia. And Australia, who are all, uh, and India, who are all affected um, by heat waves we're seeing in India, uh, some of the hottest temperatures they've ever seen in the 60s degrees Celsius. Um, Australia saw bushfires that killed um, billions of animals. Um, I'm sorry, these letters, these are like, you're saying these are examples of what Under Charter are actually investing in. in yeah, exactly. Examples. So, uh, so there are a number of coal projects that Standard Charge has uh, has invested in, and, and we have letters from activists uh, who are affected by those projects and who are fighting against those projects. And so we are, uh, yeah, we're, we're bringing that message here, so to try and make that global connect between what the, 
the uh, London City of London investors are are financing and, and how it's actually affecting people on the ground. So where are these letters? Where can we see them? How do we learn more about it? Yeah, so I think one one uh, place you can take a look is, is Defund Climate Chaos is one of the major campaigns that we've been working on. Um, it's a coalition of organizations that are, are coming to the banks and financial institutions saying stop funding and ensuring coal, oil, and gas. We know that we can't be in, in, um, we can't be investing in new fossil fuel projects yeah. if we're going to have a safe future. Yeah. Uh, and yet these these financial institutions are ignoring them. Yeah. So defund climate chaos. We've got representatives from Extinction Rebellion, uh, Money Rebellion, uh, which is the again the campaign against yeah. um, against the bank's involvement in yeah. in fossil fuel chaos, yeah. and also from Fridays for Future. Right. So defund climate chaos. Yes. Do you have a website? Do you have a flyer? Do you have something uh, I can I can I can flash on screen, or just say what the website? Website. Is. I think I, I don't. We just Google it. Yeah, Defund climate, climate chaos. chaos. I think it's probably like .org.uk, something like that. I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> um. Maybe, maybe somebody uh, in the in the back office could work some magic and and flash it on screen. So defund climate chaos. Yes. Yeah. Defund climate chaos. Yeah. Okay. And anything else you want to add? Um. I just. I want to say thanks to all the organizers who are uh, out here because we, we really have an opportunity to uh, convince, uh, if, if we can shift the behavior of these major corporations and financial institutions, uh, we really can change where the money is flowing and that has a major impact on uh, on on whether these projects get funded and, and, and whether our future is is uh, is safeguarded. So, yeah. Amazing. Well, keep up the good work. Thank you. Defund climate chaos. Thank you. Very good. And you guys will have a quick word? Uh, go on. Don't be shy. Yeah. I'm there we Ryan. go. What's your name? I'm Rain. Rain. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so you, were, you did a great job here holding up these uh, flares. And you're, got, you're holding up a banner about India. Yeah. Yeah. So what brings you here today and who are you with or what's going on? Um, as a young person. So we're, we're spinning around this way so we can have <laughs> the, the crowd behind us as well. So it's, it's, you see, it's not just us. Yeah. And a human being on this planet, I am freaking terrified about what climate change can mean for all of our futures. Mm -hmm. And so I'm here in solidarity with all the people who are on the front line of what is happening right now. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, they it's harder for them to have voices. So I feel like we have to use our privilege to try and sh um, highlight what's actually happening because often that gets like the narrative doesn't actually show us yeah. how severely some people's lives are already being affected by climate change. Mm -hmm. And it's really scary and it's horrible that they're having to go through that. So I'm really in solidarity with those people today. Very good, very good. Yeah. And uh, so obviously you're, you're in here, you're holding up a banner, you're talking about India, which uh, let's talk about again. So it's India, Standard Chartered Bank Financing Power uh, in India. They're talking about this 8.8 .8 gigawatt of new coal plants in 2019. And we we're hearing about the horrific heat waves that are going on in India yeah. at the moment. Yeah, there's, um, you know, victims of climate change already. And it's tragic because they're the people who are contributing the least to the problem produce, have a, the smallest footprints, yeah. carbon footprints. And yet um, they're the ones whose lives are being turned upside down, you know, mm -hmm. floods, fires, famine yeah. um it's really devastating so i just think that we need to keep talking about it and keep pushing for change because the responsibilities lie with us because we have so much privilege here mm -hmm. um it's ridiculous but um yeah we just need to do what we can basically yeah amazing well keep up the good work anything else you'd like to add um <laughs> coal don't <laughs> dig it leave it in the ground it's time to get with it <laughs> cool, yeah. cool. Keep up the good work. Oh, Take care. So people are starting to uh, wind down here. The the banner is just uh, has been uh, put away. Um, it was quite a gargantuous banner, very impressive. And uh, they're just rolling up the last of the banners here. People are just having a chat. I'm just going to have a quick uh, listening to uh, the director Vlad to make sure everything is okay. Yeah, okay, so we're getting live reports. 
from Manchester that uh, there is still activities going on in the AGM against uh, Barclays PLC. This reminder, who's the number one investor in hydrocarbon and fossil fuel extraction in, in Europe. And uh, they are continuing to pour uh, billions into new oil, gas, coal uh, extraction. And also they've done some of the dodgiest investments uh, that are involved uh, directly and indirectly with modern day slavery as well. Uh, so, which is uh, which needs to stop. Uh, just in case you are just uh, joining us and wondering what's going on, uh, we're outside the AGM of Standard Chartered, uh, who are having their AGM in this this building here. Uh, and uh, this group of people here, everybody here is a shareholder. All the shareholders went in and they voiced their opinion that uh, what Standard Chartered is doing is totally unacceptable. Uh, so there's a there was a bit of a standoff went off uh, in there. But also, uh, we're talking about Barclays Bank uh, and their AGM in, in Manchester. I think we've got a clip there. So if we could uh, shoot over to Manchester and uh, have a look and see what was uh, happening there or is actually happening there. To welcome Venkat and Anna to their first AGM in these roles. It's a great credit to my colleagues and predecessors, executive and non-executive, that the board had no hesitation in choosing for these roles the long identified and so-called ready now internal candidates. But I would also like to put on record uh, our collective thanks to Jess and Tushar for the years of hard work in the service of the bank, which has contributed greatly to the resilience and the performance which we now experience. Yeah, okay, so it looks like the, uh, the AGM uh, is continuing in Barclays in Manchester the uh i was going to say protesters are not protesters uh technically they are shareholders have been removed and have now left the uh, agm so the uh, the protest uh, is now finished uh, so that was going on for quite a long time so a big shout out to all the shareholders in barclays who are making a, a nice big bold stance and actually enlightening and educating other shareholders of how bad barclays is so uh that, that was pretty good so yeah, so uh, as I said, everyone's just uh, is winding down here. The uh, the people managed to get their voting cards inside into the uh, AGM, which is quite good. So this 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 type of action is quite good. It's uh, it's what it's doing. It's educating educating the shareholders. It's also educating people who know nothing about um, uh, the amount of investments that's going in in fossil fuels. Uh, just a reminder: since signing the Paris Accords. Uh, in 2015, in the last six, seven years, we've had trillions and literally trillions of dollars have been invested in new oil, gas, coal exploration uh, into new coal mines, into uh, new uh, oil rigs. Here in the United Kingdom, we've got new licenses issued by our energy minister uh, for at least, I think it's 38 new uh, oil, and, oil and gas mines in uh, oil and uh gas in the north sea uh and this is like literally flying in the face of the latest climate science uh which we've got now is it's it's more than the code red for humanity it's it's like uh we're talking about like this is this is firefighting going on here and uh not only should we be stopping all uh coal and gas extraction we need to actually uh now uh sequent vast amounts of of greenhouse gases from the atmosphere uh, and this is this is the very very frightening scary thing that's going on because the likes of uh, Standard Chartered Barclays they're trying to claim that uh, things like um, carbon capture and storage CCS technologies is is going to save us and so they've got this kind of get out of jail clause it's the same as the uh, UK energy strategy uh, which is uh, totally reliant on carbon capture and storage so there are reasons that we can continue. Uh, new uh, airport expansion, new coal expansion, and everything is on the fact that we're going to build these machines that are going to suck vast amounts of particles out of the atmosphere to cool the planet, right? Unproven technology uh, on such scales that it's just eye water and the amount of actual investment that's needed. Uh, that's why we saw, like a couple of weeks ago, 25 scientists uh, gluing themselves to the front of the Department of Business, Energy, and Climate Change. Uh, and, and other things that are happening here and around the country and around the world. So yeah, so the message is loud and clear. If we want to uh, have a, at least a small chance of reducing the worst impacts of, of climate change and biodiversity destruction, what we need to do is we need to stop 
all funding, and I mean like all funding that's going into destruction of the biosphere, and that needs to, that needs to actually happen right now. It needs to happen from the buildings behind me here, these AGMs uh, of these multinational corporations, uh, big banks, big corporations. And I can personally say from my own experience, uh, I work in renewable energy, it is extremely hard to get funding for certain projects, you know, overseas projects in developing countries, because the big banks, it doesn't fit with their traditional mold of uh, lending money, okay? So they like to have a, a strong power purchase agreement, and to have that, they have to have a, a large bankable client, and then they sign off on it, and everybody's happy, and there has to be vast amounts of money, okay? When you're dealing with uh, sustainability projects and renewable projects on a small scale with local communities, uh, you don't have bankable uh, clients. And what happens is the likes of Barclays, uh, Standard Chartered, and all these investment companies all around the world will not invest in these projects, okay? So we need to have a systemic change in attitude. Uh, we need to have a change of, uh, of the way uh, bankers view uh, what, what, uh, uh, you know, what is actually investable. Uh, and uh, we just need to shake up this whole, yeah, just this whole investment market and, and just uh, like enough is enough. So um, I think uh, we might just, uh, we're going to end shortly. And if we could uh, end with uh, some clips. Yeah. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, end now. And we've got clips of some of the actions today and some of the actions yesterday. Uh, just a reminder, if you are watching this, uh, we need to get this message out. Uh, one of the biggest problems is mainstream media uh, not reporting on the ecological and climate emergency. That's why we rely very heavily on these these live streams and we rely on our own social media to do this. So the easiest thing you can do right now at home is to uh, click share. Uh, you know, you can tag a couple of people, you can tag a couple of different groups, but please share this, uh, please comment, please get onto Twitter, please get onto Instagram or whatever your social media of the choices and, and spread the message you know so this is what we need you to do at home if you're at home it's the easiest thing that you can do to actually help uh join a local group uh get involved uh 2022 we just need to be back out in the streets uh using our voices while we can before our rights are taken away from us on protesting um yeah i'm gonna leave it on that uh, thanks for watching and uh, we're gonna end with a, a couple of clips uh from here and from around the country Barclays Bank is bankrupt, morally bankrupt. Since 2016, the bank has ploughed into the fossil fuel industry no less than $166 billion of finance, notwithstanding the outcome of the 2015 Paris Climate Accord, uh, since when uh, the bank has known about the climate emergency uh, and has known of the damage that their investments are, are wreaking on the climate. Furthermore, Barclays directors are in breach of their fiduciary duty to the company as the asset value of their borrowers will fall off a cliff as the climate emergency develops, putting them uh, in breach of their duty to the company and the shareholders, uh, not least also uh, their duty uh, to the people of the world. For that reason, I am protesting today at Barclays AGM in Manchester. Hi, I'm Zoe. I'm a 51-year-old mum, and I fully intend to disrupt the Barclays AGM tomorrow. Life on Earth is collapsing. Humans are facing an unimaginable present and future. More than one billion people are in an extreme dangerous heat wave right now across India and Pakistan and Barclays are just giving us greenwash, greenwash after greenwash. They are still funding new, new and existing fossil fuels and this has to stop. It must stop now. They are colluding in death with every stroke of their pen and every keystroke on their keyboard. It needs to end now. My name is David McKelvey. I've been a doctor for 37 years and in all of that time, I've done my utmost to enhance the health and well-being of the people that I serve. Barclays, with its continuing ongoing investments in fossil fuels and trying to extract even more from the earth, is jeopardising our life support systems and indeed, therefore, our health 
never name the health of billions of other people around the earth. And all of this is done in the name of profit. But I've got to ask, what kind of a profit is that if you don't have health? Good morning, I'm Ricky, I'm 37 years old and I'm a disabled rebel from Bedford. I'm taking part today in Money Rebellion's AGM action at Standard Chartered. I'm taking part because um, people in Asia and Mozambique are on the forefront of the um, fossil fuel damage that these banks are investing in they don't get a chance to have their voices heard so I'm here today to represent their voices and to demand that Standard Chartered end their fossil fuel financing immediately